Yo Aztec Warriors, today we're going to go into shin splint pains. Now what we're going to cover is understanding where shin splint pains originate from as well as how to treat them and finally how to prevent them. It's going to be a good one. Let's do it! Woo! Okay guys, what I'm gonna do here is explain to you where you could experience pain if you have a shin splint. Now the whole point of all of the muscles here in the front part is to allow your toe to point towards you. That's also known as dorsiflexion, where you're, boom, pointing your toe at you. Now, you can have three places you can have pain, either the inner part of your lower leg, the outer part, or directly in the middle. Now if you feel here along this ridge right here, this is the bony ridge of your tibia bone. Now if you feel all the way to the inner part right along this edge, this here contains a muscle called the tibialis posterior. Now what tends to happen is when this muscle is inflamed, you'll feel a sharp pain all along the edge of your tibia. If you feel it along this portion here, which is really big muscle, you'll see here when I point my toe that it'll flex. This muscle contains a lot of blood vessels that run down to your foot as well as nerve endings that run down to your foot. What tends to happen is if this gets inflamed, it's going to push against all those blood vessels and nerves and as a result, it's gonna be painful. Now, the last one is if you have a pain somewhere along the actual tibia. This one here, if you actually touch on the bone and it hurts, that's usually the sign of a stress fracture. What that means is that you actually have a crack along your bone. And typically that is within the lower portion here of your tibia. If you do have a sign of pain on the bone itself, please go get it checked out by a medical practitioner because they're the ones that can fix you for that. Don't go trying to YouTube how to fix that. Okay. What job? All right guys, there are two main reasons why people typically get shin splint pains. The first one being that you're flat-footed, or the technical term is you overpronate. Okay, here's an example of your feet caving inward, and this could be caused by having weak hips. Your body will compensate to allow you to run straight by having your feet cave in. Another reason could be your running stride or it could be the arch support in the shoes you wear, which we'll cover in this video later. Oh yeah. Watcha! And the second reason is if you guys tend to increase the volume or intensity of your runs way too fast. Now this is if you are running, let's say five miles a week, and then the next week you run 30 miles. Feeling good, gone for 20 today. Maybe not. Son of a bitch, it hurts. Where's the damn car? Yeah, not the best idea. Mm. The main reasoning that increasing your mileage or intensity too quickly will cause you to get shin splints is that your lower leg can't handle it, your tibia and your muscles. Your tibia is the main shock absorber, so every single time your foot lands on the ground, the tibia helps to absorb that impact. Also, your muscles are just like any other muscle in your body. If you push it too hard too soon, what's gonna happen is your tibialis posterior, tibialis anterior just can't handle it, and as a result, pain! Those are the two main reasons why you will get shin splints. to make sure that you find an alternative cardiovascular exercise to help maintain your cardio gains that you've made with your initial runs but at the same time really don't be stupid try to find something else that won't aggravate the pain so that you can recover faster 
You guys may have seen TheraBand or resistance band exercises like these here used to strengthen the front part of your foot. And truly, they are useless piece of. All right guys, the next portion here, I'm gonna cover a couple different strength training exercises that you can do to be able to help you alleviate and mainly prevent shin splint pains. Now, the three main areas that you wanna be focusing on for these is going to be your calves, your glutes, and your hip stabilizers. The main reason for that, as I demonstrated earlier with those TheraBand or resistance band exercises, you're mainly working on your tibialis anterior when you're doing those movements where you're pointing your toe towards you. Now, that muscle has nothing to do with shock absorption every time you take a landing. So every time, boom, you're falling, you don't use that muscle to be able to absorb the impact. Just try this with me. Boom, boom, boom. When you drive your toe into the ground, you're gonna feel it right away in your calf, in your quads, and in your glutes, and in this hip region. So in other words, you wanna focus on those regions to strengthen them instead. Let's jump into those. First one up, we got the clam. Now this one's gonna be working on your hip stabilizers, so you should really feel it in the side of your booty to help keep your knee in line so that your foot does not pronate. Now with this one here, you want to find a wall, scoot up against it, have your foot, your butt, your upper back or shoulder blade region and your head in contact with the wall. And if you see here, I'm using my hand to drive my upper body into the wall. And all you're doing here is opening and closing your knees. Trust me, man, do a few of these and your hips are gonna be like, sweet Jesus. Oh yeah, second one. All right, this one here is a single leg hip thrust. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to drive from the heel on the foot that you have planted, your other leg, you wanna lift it up and keep your knees in line together. So if you see, my knees are moving together and your foot should be in line with your shoulders. So at the top, you should be a nice straight line. If it makes it easier, what you can do is you can drive your elbows into the ground to help drive your hips up. And this is really going to help you to strengthen up your glutes and hamstrings so that your hips are nice and stable and you don't go flat footed while you run. Third final exercise, single leg calf raise. And this one, self-explanatory. Find something that's elevated, lift your heel up. Now, this was probably one of the most important ones because your calf is the number one shock absorbing muscle every time your foot falls. And fun fact, the bigger your calf muscle, the bigger your tibia is, which as I explained earlier, stronger tibia reduces shin splint pains. Yeah! Yeah, coolios, busting out the fitness nerd in me. All right, final few pointers for you guys to be able to prevent shin splint pains. The first one I recommend is the surface that you're running on. Now, typically a lot of people that run in their neighborhoods or out in the city run on sidewalks, which is made out of cement, much harder, which it ends up being much harder on your joints and your muscles. I recommend using the street, which is made out of asphalt, much softer, and even better if you have a nearby park or woods by you, run on grass and dirt. It's much softer, much better on the joints, and you don't feel it so much on your shins. The next one is utilizing orthotics in your shoes. Preferably an orthotic that has a hard surface because if you get the ones that are gel-like, what tends to happen is that your legs are all unstable running on that gel and really it doesn't help you for your shin splints. So get something that has a hard surface to help push your arch up so that it doesn't flatten out. Or you can also get shoes that have a harder surface, or excuse me, sole in the middle portion of your foot to help push your arch up. And then the final tip that I recommend is changing your running style. Let me show you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. Haha! -ha, I know your cheetah eyes can see my footwork here. Oh yeah! Now let's actually slow it down. So here what you can see is that I'm reaching forward with my toes and landing on my midfoot or ball of my feet. And what this helps do is that you are utilizing more of your calves and you're giving your tibialis anterior a chance to rest because you see here, you're not really pointing your toes until your body or your foot gets under your body. 
So as a result, over the course of a few miles, your tibialis anterior doesn't fatigue as much. Now here we'll see a heel strike. Let's slow down again here. And what you'll see is your toes actually pointing towards you the majority of the time. It really isn't until the kicking portion, which is right about here, that your foot actually straightens out. So since you're in that flex position, it's gonna fatigue a lot faster. You're gonna get shin splints a lot more frequently. Now this does take about six to nine months to transition over to this foot pattern of landing on your midfoot, the midfoot, and it's gonna hurt like hell when you first start out, but I highly recommend it, and it'll also increase your running speed as well. Yay to that! In order to change your running style, you have to also change your shoes. Typically, if you use these shoes, they feel very heavy, and you're gonna wanna go back into a heel strike. So what you're gonna wanna do is get these minimalist type of shoes that have a thinner sole at the bottom so that you're able to have that better flexibility for a midfoot strike. And then you're gonna be cruising on down the roads. Thank you guys so much for watching. Wish this helps you with your running endeavors. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Also, subscribe in the link above. New videos every Wednesday and Fridays. And I'll see you out in the roads. Woo!